film photography being edited with AI. Is that cheating? If you're one of the three people that follow me on Instagram, you will see that for the first time in over 20 years, the other day I went and shot some photographs on film. I'm such a hipster. And really whilst the purpose of that shoot was to see whether this Olympus OM2 that I bought during one of the COVID lockdowns actually worked, it brought back so many memories. It really highlighted to me how different the process of shooting film is to that of digital photography. But more on that later. What I really want to talk about today is how much I'm enjoying taking photographs I've taken on film and putting them into modern editing software to, well, edit them. Let me show you what I mean. Take a look at this photograph, which I took at the aforementioned day at the beautiful Hever Castle, the home of Anderlin. They were having a car rally, and as my son is car mad and I wanted to take some photographs on this camera to test it out, I decided to kill two birds with one stone. Now, this isn't a great photo, and as you can see, it was a busy day. I stood no chance of taking the photograph I wanted without somebody or something being in the background. But the great thing is now, I can put this photograph into Lightroom and do things like amend the exposure, adjust the contrast, the highlights, the shadows, the whites and the blacks, whatever I might like. I could, if I wanted to, remove some of the noise, but hey, this is a film photograph, so that's part of the characteristics of it. I could also add some masking and some vignettes, and also, these are really big files, so if I wanted to, I could crop it. Not that I'm going to in this case. And then, I can fire it over to Photoshop, and this is where the real magic happens. What I'm really enjoying is using the generative AI function in Photoshop to remove those objects in the background and tidy the photograph up to get it to look just as I wanted it to. But then I started having a bit of a dilemma. Is mixing the analog nature of film photography with modern processing techniques, such as using generative AI, cheating or fakery or immoral in some kind of way? I know what the purists out there will say. Yes, how dare you sully the beautiful nature of analog film photography with that digital filth. Firstly, editing photographs is nothing new. The first bully manipulated photograph can actually be traced back to around the 1860s when a photograph of John C. Calhoun had the head replaced with that of Abraham Lincoln for a propaganda photograph during the American Civil War. It was done so well in fact it was only uncovered as fake a number of years later. Now that is an extreme example, but really processes like dodging and burning photographs to lighten and darken specific areas of them, or even pushing and pulling the film itself to actually increase or decrease the overall exposure of a photograph have been there since day one. So as I said, changing the look and feel of a photograph or even creating composites is nothing new. It's just that these days we have different ways of applying those techniques. They're easier, they're digital, and to be honest with you, they're far more accessible. The second argument I've heard people make with regards to why film photographs really shouldn't be processed in the likes of Lightroom and Photoshop is people saying things like, well, if you wanted a film look, why wouldn't you take a photograph on your digital camera and use all those fancy techniques to get that film look? And I get that argument. It's something that even I've done in the past, like here, where I took a digital photograph and applied a technique in Lightroom to give it an infrared film look, turning all of the green hues pink. And I can't even open Facebook these days without seeing an advert which is offering me presets or LUTs to get a Kodak film look. And that's all fine. But for me, taking photographs with a film camera is a completely different process. For example, if I'm out taking photographs with my digital camera, well then, I can take hundreds of photographs. I can take the same scene again and again and again until I've got it to look exactly as I want. And I know that I've achieved that because I can see it straight away. I can take photographs with reckless abandon. And that's just not the case with film photography. Most films only have 24 or 36 exposures, so I'm very limited. And one thing to know is that it is not cheap. More to come on that in a future video, but I really have to think about what I'm taking photographs of. And clearly with this, I don't have the ability to review a photograph. Once it's taken, it's taken. So unless I've made a fundamental error that I noticed straight away, come on, we've all tried to take a photograph with a lens cap on, haven't we? Then the photograph is done. And for me, all this means that a lot more time and consideration goes into taking photographs with a film camera. If a process isn't followed and thought is not put into that photograph, well then there's a far greater likelihood that I'm not going to get the picture that I wanted. So I end up taking vastly different photographs with a film camera than I do with a digital one, just because of all of that process that has to go into using this thing. So for me, shooting with film and editing on a computer is ultimately just a completely different variant of photography than using a digital camera. It's not better or worse than digital photography, it's just a different flavor, and I'm really enjoying it. Anyway, apologies for the diatribic, diatribic, long and verbose video. The idea of it isn't really to impress on you what my thoughts are, 
but really to understand what you think. So let me know what you think in the comments section below. Editing film photographs in Lightroom and Photoshop. A new art form? Cheating? Well, you just don't care. A photograph's a photograph. And that's it for today, folks. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Comments and feedback in the section below as always. And until next time, have a great day.